Welcome to today's episode where we're talking about beginner all the way to professional vlogging camera setups. But first, got to jump in the lake because it's hot today. This is literally like five minutes from my house. Oh, so nice to have a lake nearby. The first vlogging setup that I would suggest for beginner vloggers and content creators is basically whatever is in your pocket right now. Basically any mobile phone. And the reason why I suggest that is because you're not gonna have to go out and break the bank right away. Instead, you can just use what you already have. And because oftentimes people walk around with their phone in their pocket, it also means you're never gonna miss a moment. There's been so many times where I've wanted to capture something in the past and I didn't have my you know, big mirrorless camera and I missed the moment. Whereas if you start vlogging with your mobile phone, you always have it on you and you're not gonna miss a moment. I'm vlogging right now on the iPhone 14 Pro and I really like the iPhone 14 Pro because it's got the three lenses. So I got the ultra wide, wide telephoto, meaning I'm not gonna miss any moments and I can get really coverage of everything. As well, the iPhone 14 Pro actually has a really great image. You know, you got 4K, uh, it's able to expose the shots actually really well. Even right now, this would be a pretty uh, tricky situation for a traditional mirrorless camera to expose, but because of software in the iPhones, it's able to expose the background and even get some detail in my face. For audio, I think because it's a phone and the iPhone was created for talking and for recording audio, it's actually really good, just the microphone that's built in right there. So when I'm vlogging on an iPhone, I don't have any you know, external microphones or shotgun mics. You could if you want, but I personally don't need to. One thing though that I think is really helpful to get some sort of you know Manfrotto tripod like the one I'm using right now is the Manfrotto Pixie Clip because then you can set it down like this right now and you know compose the shot a little bit and film or just to be able to hold it and then film yourself. Now one of the main downsides of vlogging with something like the iPhone 14 Pro is that if you want to be using the main cameras to get the best quality out of the iPhone 14 Pro, you're kind of filming blind. Even right now, I can't see what this footage is looking like. I don't know what the exposure is. I don't know if the camera somehow moved and it's messed it up. I'm just going completely blind. And even more so if you're out just vlogging and talking, you have no clue how it's looking. So that is one of the downsides of filming with something like the iPhone 14 Pro. The next vlogging camera setup that I would suggest is for people who are constantly on the go, moving about, maybe they're into action sports and they just don't wanna miss a moment. And the camera that I would suggest for them is the Insta360 X3. Now, what's unique about this camera is that when you're filming, it's constantly filming 360 all around, meaning you're not gonna miss a moment because in post then, you get to decide which angle you're gonna be using. Gotta love my parking spot for my bike at the volleyball court. <laughs> So like I said, what's cool about the Insta360 X3 is that because it's capturing 360 all around right now, I can decide later which angles I'm gonna be exporting out of this shot. So for example, I get a shot of me riding my bike, I get a shot of what's in front of me to show my POV kind of perspective, and you know, I can do tilts and pans and all sorts of movements in the Insta360 Studio app, which is great because if you're, you know, filming, for example, snowboarding, you want to be able to film yourself, but you also want to be filming what's going in front of you. For example, if a friend bails in front of you, you don't want to miss that moment. So with the Insta360, you'll never miss that because it's always filming all around 360 and you can just decide afterwards and post which angles you're going to be exporting out. Another cool thing about the Insta360 X3 is the fact that it stitches out this big selfie pole. I'm holding right now probably like a one and a half meter pole in my hand and it's not showing the shot because the Insta360 software is cutting it out. So it makes it feel like you got this little personal FPV drone just following you wherever you go, which is just really sick looking. Now, probably one of the main downsides about the Insta360 X3 is the audio quality. So right now I have actually no clue is this talking even coming out well because, well, I'm riding a bike so it's pretty windy and yeah, I don't have any other microphone systems right now that I'm using. Oh man, riding a bike while talking. So one thing that I would suggest if you're gonna vlog with, for example, the Insta360 X3 is to get the adapter so then you can then attach some sort of wireless microphone system 
to the X3, meaning you'll have great visuals and great audio. On top of audio being a little bit of a downside, the second downside of the Insta360 X3 is the fact that the workflow is a little bit slow. You know, you first film with your X3 and then you gotta throw it all into the Insta360 Studio app and then export all of your clips. So that's just like one extra step more than traditionally vlogging with, for example, the iPhone or other cameras. So that is one downside of the Insta360 X3. You're gonna have to pay the price to have really creative shots by keyframing and doing all that Insta360 Studio. It's not that hard, but it just takes time. The nice thing is that the Insta360 X3 is only 450 bucks, so you have a nice compact all-in-one vlogging camera setup in this, and then if you do wanna have better audio, you're gonna have to get the adapter and then some sort of wireless microphone system, which will cost you a little bit more. The next vlogging camera setup that I would suggest for someone then who maybe wants a little bit more control and better quality for video and audio would be the Sony ZV-1 Mark Two. For a thousand bucks, this all-in-one package is giving you a lot. First, you have a brand new focal length. It's got the 18 to 50 millimeter, meaning it's finally wide enough to actually vlog while having stabilization on. The CV-1, back in the day, the problem with that was that if you wanted to have both a wide focal length and stabilization on, it just wasn't possible because it cropped in. But now the fact that it's 18 millimeters, it is possible to wide with a wide focal length and have stabilization on. Nobody wants to have that bobble head effect, you know, with just this head in the shot. You want to be able to see your environment, but as well, you want your footage to be steady and stable. With the ZV-1 Mark II, you also have the flip LCD screen. So that actually means you can see what you're filming. You can compose your shots better, make sure your exposure is right on. Whereas then when you're filming with the iPhone 14 Pro or the Insta360, you don't really really know how's the composition looking or how's the exposure looking until afterwards. The ZV-1 Mark II also has this really cool three microphone system which is using AI. So basically, if the camera notices that you're in the shot, it's gonna use the front mic, but then if it doesn't see you in the shot, it's gonna use the back mic, making sure that no matter what, whether you're talking to the camera like this or talking from behind the camera, the audio is gonna sound good. And I would say that these built-in uh, microphone system actually is really good. So when I've been filmed with the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, I haven't actually been using any external mics, just the built-in mic system. The Sony ZV-1 Mark II also has some interesting features for content creators and vloggers. For example, if you're filming the Sony ZV-1 Mark II and you're showing off a product and you put it close to the lens of the camera, it's gonna start focusing on that rather than your face. Whereas with other camera systems, you kind of have to like block your face in order for it to go and focus on the product. So that's a cool feature. As well, the ZV-1 Mark II has this exposure priority mode. So basically, it's gonna keep on exposing just your face, which is really great when you're vlogging and walking around. And if the lighting is changing, it's just gonna keep the priority of exposing your face. Lastly, probably the most important and great thing about the Sony ZV-1 Mark II is the fact that it's just so small and compact. I mean, just look at it. It just fits into the palm of my hand. I can put it into my pocket. And the reason why that's great is that because it's so small, you can take it everywhere with you and you're not gonna miss a moment when you're vlogging. The Sony ZV-1 Mark II does cost $900 on B&H right now, so it is gonna break the bank a little bit, but I think the fact that you're getting all of it in one package is pretty dang good. From a vlogging perspective, I really can't give too many downsides to the ZV-1 Mark II. Maybe the only thing that is a little bit of a downside is that because it is a fixed lens, you can't just put on different kinds of lenses, which could be limiting in the future. Maybe you do want an even wider perspective or you wanna have a tighter perspective of the telephoto lens. You can't do that with the ZV-1 Mark II, but I do think that 18 to 15 millimeter does cover your bases, so not sure is that too much of a downside. Also, for some people, the price can be a lot. This is $900 on B&H. I think that's pretty affordable, but it's also different because I do this for a living, so I do understand if someone's starting to get into vlogging or content creation, that paying that much can be a lot. And the last and final vlogging camera setup that I would suggest for you guys is the one that I'm using. And this is probably for people who are doing vlogging content creation for a full-time job and are being able to make money off of it because this setup is not cheap. So basically, I have the Sony a7S III with the 1635 G Master lens, then I'm using a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus and the Joby Gorilla Pod. And this setup 
goes for a whopping $6,150. So basically the A7S3 is $3,500, then the 1635 is $2,200, the shotgun mic is $300, and then the Gorilla Pod is 150 bucks. Now, do you need this setup if you wanna make high quality vlogging content? No. But it is nice to have this setup because it does make things it easier for me. For example, the Sony a7S III just has really great high quality footage, nice dynamic range, a lot of flexibility for color grading. You got this auto tracking, it just makes sure that it's always in focus. I got the flip LCD screen so I can see what I'm filming. With the 1635, I can get wide enough while I'm vlogging, but I can also zoom in for my B-roll shots. And then the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, it just gives nice high quality audio. And then the Joby Gorilla Pod, well, we all have a love-hate relationship with that guy. It's great, but it's well, it's annoying. Ultimately, for someone who's doing full-time content creation, a setup like this is good for them because it's built to last, you're gonna get high quality footage, audio, and it just does the job. Now, is it always convenient to carry around this whole setup with you vlogging? No, and that's what I would say is probably one of the downsides of having a more professional vlogging camera setup because you probably don't always feel like carrying this whole system and kit with you everywhere you go, meaning you're gonna miss moments. And that's why I would say there is pros to having really minimalistic setups like just an iPhone 14 Pro or the Sony ZV-1 Mark II because you can always have it on you, meaning you can always pull it out and start filming when needed and you can get the shots that you want. So yeah, those are the four vlogging setups that I would recommend. Number one was the mobile phone, whatever is in your pocket because you're not gonna miss a moment, it's not gonna break your bank. Number two was the Insta360 X3, perfect for people who are on the move, filming action sports, and they don't wanna miss a moment. Highly recommend that camera for that type of a vlogger or content creator. Then we have number three, which is the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. For someone who wants to maybe get a little bit more serious in vlogging, invest a little bit of money into it to get better video and audio quality, and just to be able to really focus on composition and your exposure and all that stuff. And then last, we have the Beast, the A7S III with the 1635. This whole setup is for the professional vlogger content creator. Now, is there one right setup? No. You gotta figure out what serves you best. For some people, a mobile phone is the best setup and the most best serving type of camera. Whereas then for me, I would say that the A7S III is something that has served me well as a YouTube content creator and vlogger. Confident that these tips will help you figure out what setup will serve you best. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because I'd love to have you for future videos and to be part of this community. Thanks for watching.